Hey Leos, welcome back to Deku Tarot and welcome to your October 2019 monthly tarot reading. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe guys and check out your other uh, monthly October readings for your sun, moon, rising, and Venus. The messages might resonate better with you or have messages that you need to hear, okay? Um, also check out your new moon reading. It's timestamped for all the signs and if you want to book a private reading guys All that information is right below this video in the description box. You can also um, Check out um, daily readings, which I've been bringing back to the channel and I also do over on my um, Instagram So check those out too. Okay, Leo's let's get into this. Um, let me have a sip of coffee here Isn't that adorable? It's so cute I'm a sucker for Halloween mugs, even though we have a million mugs. Uh, let's let's get into this. I would like to use the Morgan Greer Tarot for you guys. Leo, 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 Leo. It's been a roller coaster of a year. I think all the fixed signs have been. I think that yes, we've had eclipses with Cancer and Capricorn. It's been tough for them, but I think Uranus and Taurus has been really shaking up the world for fixed signs, especially. I mean, for everybody. And in a general sense, but I also think fixed signs are getting a special dose of crazy and intense and what's going on. So let's check this out, okay? Leos, 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 Leos. And we're in Libra season, which is the time where we're focusing on balance, balance in relationships, balance in the Venusian realms, creativity. So I feel like we might be feeling a little bit sensitive or affected in those areas, especially what's coming out here first is the sun reversed. Interesting. Okay, queen of pentacles reversed. It's gonna be like this, huh? Okay, what's coming out here, hanged man? If you are dealing or hung up on an earth sign, there's a lot of there's something going on there. Well, actually, before I even get into it, I feel like. I feel like we need more cards before I can even make a statement there, honestly. Ace of Rods isn't bad, especially after the Hanged Man. Again, it's very... Okay. Okay, like I said, very stop and go. Or like I was about to say, very stop and go. Which is interesting because that's kind of how Virgo season felt. And we're kind of getting a dose of that this season, but in a very different way. There's a lot of insecurity here I'm picking up on. Um, yeah, the star reversed. Let's see what else we get here. Okay, can we get one card? Thank you. Ten of rods reversed. Okay, there's a perfectionism that some of you guys need to override within yourself. And I don't know exactly where, it, yep, five of rods, where it comes from, but it comes from, well, I think I do know where it comes from, but um, it has to do with how other people perceive you, what they're saying about you, what you believe people, what you believe to be important about what people are thinking, saying, doing about you. Um, really, your impression, your... Your ego has a lot to do with this reading. And, and ego is kind of... I don't want to sound basic, but it's kind of an energy that you guys are known for. That people pick up a lot with Leos. Yep, okay. The chariot reversed. The wheel of fortune reversed. To me, I get immediately a feeling of... Remember those eclipses back in July? Um, we had cancer... We had eclipses, I, I think it was Capricornian Cancer back in July, and I think a lot of this has to do 
with what was going on during those times. I think if this is coming up for you and Aquarius, there's a lot of focus on similar repeating cycles or feelings, situations, things that happened or started then, and you're coming, you're thinking about it again, you're thinking about what happened then, but you're also, there's a sense of loss surrounding that energy there. It feels like suddenly we aren't moving forward the way we wanted to. Again, there's a lot of insecurity here. And don't worry, I'll show some of the cards, but I feel like there's more that needs to come out for you guys. Um, wow. Yeah, okay. Four of rods and nine of cups. There is a really dreamy energy to why, to the why of this. It's been really tough, hasn't it? It's been a tough year. You guys have had a lot of major shakeups, major, major, major shifts in your life here, Leos. Um, I think all the fixed signs again got hit. I think a lot, most signs got hit really hard this year, but I would say you, Taurus, Scorpio, Aquarius, then Cancer and Capricorn had the toughest, most intense years of well, 2019. Four of Rods, Nine of Cups. Where does this all stem from? Why do I, I know he was going to come out. Uh, what else is coming out? Where does this all stem from? Hmm, Ten of Cups. You got the Eight of Rods. I don't know where it went. It was attached to that, but I'll remember that. Don't worry. Sometimes you get a card and then you just lose it. And that's the way it goes. But let's see. Um, This might have to do with... Let's see if... Before I put it out, into, out loud, I feel... This is what I think it is. The roots of this. Come on, can we get one card here? And it's all out of like one card. Okay. Um, you know what? I don't think it wants. To, okay, maybe it does. Judgment. And we'll see if anything else comes out. I want to ask, ask you guys. Very matter-of-factly here, if this has to do with your father, it has to do with a paternal relationship, has to do with abandonment. If you had a father that traveled a lot, that was not around a lot, or if you feel even just emotionally abandoned by your father and yet are expected, yet you kind of, it feels to me... And Libra season has a tendency for us to really focus on the masks, right? Because Libras are great at pretending to be keep their cool when nothing is cool. And what we get here, Emperor, Ten of Cups, Reverse, Two of Cups. For me, and this is when I with the judgment card, is looking again at why these patterns keep coming up. Why do we always feel a lot why do we always feel like we're abandoned? by a man, I don't want to say that like it's daddy issues, but it kind of feels like for some of you, let's all be honest, it kind of feels like daddy issues. And I don't mean that in some kind of funny, like how I met your mother kind of way, but there's been serious moments of abandonment, of heartbreak, of feelings of loss, like you're not loved, like this this isn't the way relationships should be, but this is what I've grown used to and have come to accept. And now I look for this in other people, or I look for a way to rehabilitate myself through this type of relationship. And I don't know if you pick similar, again, this might just be like female Leos that are into male Leos that I'm picking up on. I don't know, but this is very much like, it doesn't have to be, you don't have to be gay, straight, non bi You don't have to be anything for this to resonate. It just feels like there are parental relationships here that are coming back into question or we're finally noticing that we have high idealism for relationships, yet we accept 
less and we are not confident about relationships maybe because of our parents relationship so i don't know what kind of relationship they had i don't know what kind of marriage they had but maybe you guys have so much fear maybe they had a bad divorce and you weren't around you know you didn't see your father a lot or you didn't see your mother a lot um and you kind of blame you know the father figure or the mother figure whoever it is you don't trust that type of emperor energy and yet you also are willing to give the control over to that energy when you're in relationships here and there is a need from within that you know starts and stops our relationships that gives us you know this like and you guys have the, almost this innocent ability and love this innocent naivety where you know you expect or you just go head first you just dive head first into things like um and it takes a lot for Aquarius to do that. Taurus and Scorpio are very hesitant and have to unfold all their layers and take it very slow. But you guys have such a different energy as I like to describe you guys as, you know, your golden retriever puppies. You know, you have so much love. Like you are pure love. Whatever you're feeling, you're ready to put that out, the energy out there. You're doing it. You're putting that energy out there. You're going for it. It's so naive and I don't mean like I don't mean it as a negative thing because I think it's beautiful to love so unapologetically so beautifully I really do uh, but we have problems with relationships all you know that kind of energy does not coincide or does not you know align very well with all this false energy of you know I'm going for this and now I stop and then I go for this and then I stop and then I go for this and then I don't expect it to go anywhere or I ex you know I you start something here it feels like you know, you're always hung up on this, on this kind of energy. You start something with the fear and expectations almost of everything going wrong, of finding things wrong, bringing heartbreak into the relationship. If you constantly try to start relationships with people who are not available, if you constantly try to make things work with people that you know aren't going to work, things where it's almost interesting because I just did Aquarius before this and it feels to me like, you know, you saw the expiration date, they saw the expiration date on the milk and then they drank it anyways for months. <laughs> um, what is it that, it's like, it reminds me of like Kevin in the office when, Andy or somebody, I think it's when Andy goes away and he's like, oh, I don't want to bring back like my chunky sour milk or something. Oh, which it makes me just grossed out to say, but it feels like that for them. Whereas for you, you get a fresh thing of milk and you immediately are like, but I know it's going to go bad in a day. So what's the point of drinking this? Or what's the point of enjoying this? Um, and that's really what this feels like. You bring up, you, it's almost like you don't realize that you self-sabotage. And you don't really know why, but I think it has a lot to do with fear of abandonment. And you don't want to be the one that's abandoned. So when it happens, and I feel like for some of you it did happen recently. The star reverse, the ten of wands reverse. We have to let go of... We have to let go of perfection. Because I think that whatever happened with our parents, whatever their relationship was like, whatever this energy is that kind of comes in and throughout the back kind of like snakes a background through all of your relationships it feels like and constantly brings the abandonment into question will this person abandon me do they really have real love for me i don't think it's real love forget it as soon as it's like boom 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 like it's kind of like that now that sounds it looked really silly but um there is really high expectations, a dream, you know, with things aren't exactly perfect. If you know, we can't make it be perfect. Or so again, for some of you, I think it's an obsession on finding that perfect relationship. So we're always finding fault in others. And we're always, you know, looking for relationships that have expiration dates so that we don't have to go all in. So we don't have to take that chance of losing, not just, you know, that, you know, equal offer, but all those 10 cups that we can build up with that person, the opportunity to have that grow. Um, this is more like if you are only, you know, you're finding fault with anything that doesn't feel 100% perfect. And so you doom it before it even has the chance to grow legs and become something real. We can't knock something before we've been through those 10 cups, before we've gone through enough of it. Instead, it feels to me like, yeah, we try to self-sabotage. We start things that we know are going to end or nothing ever really stacks up to what we think is going to be perfect enough to withstand the test of time. Um, it could be also that our parents, because they had a bad relationship, are like, you know, marriage isn't worth it. This isn't worth it. Finding that person, you'll never do it. And because of that, 
you're kind of disillusioned with the whole marriage concept of the whole dream person with making your wish come true. It doesn't feel real. It doesn't feel like that could be even be a real answer. So why even play the real game? There's just really a dis, there's like a, whatever it might be, there's a lot of misalignment here with what we really want and how we're really going about getting it. We feel like we've been on the wrong end of the wheel, but I think it's because we're not really in alignment with what we're going towards. If we want to give something a fighting chance, we can't, you know, step into it assuming it's going to be bad or this person, this situation. You know, we, we're making assumptions before we can really delve into it here. Um, three of Cups and Five of Wands. Again, where I think that we're also very afraid of what other people are going to say, think, or do in terms of this. We want to, we might even have a relationship coming back in here or something that you know we might want to do something with but or this other person might want to bring out into the open might want to make real and we're just like no I'm not doing that right now I'm not interested in that I'm really not, not feeling it but I'd rather even just be friends with you I'd rather not even hook up with you if that's the case it feels very much like There's a lot of confidence, there's a lot of, there's a lot of confidence issues is what I mean. There's a lot of confidence issues, a lot of self-assuredness, a lot of holding yourself back rather than stepping fully into something because you guys live, love and live so unapologetically that whatever has happened in the past to kind of make you act this way in relationships and make this a constant issue here it feels like it goes so much deeper it's because of a parental relationship a relationship that we saw a relationship with our father our grandfather whatever this might be um i feel like we care very much about how they feel and yet we also don't realize that we carry their own their burdens here and that's why this keeps coming up so let's pull some romance actually let's pull a couple cards of advice couple of cards of advice and then we'll move on to the romance angel cards and Halloween Oracle okay cards of advice um, ten of pentacles reverse time to let go of a cycle that has been you know again this is interesting because this came up for Aquarius too and for me this exact card reversed and everything it feels to me like house that's collapsed again a collapsing house that has been poisoned from the inside has been rotting from the inside if you were trying to build a house with all this rotted wood it's like you were providing the rotted wood and wondering why the house wasn't staying built why it was crumbling or you know um why it just couldn't it couldn't stand the test of time you now need to look at why what you're building relationships upon what beliefs are you building it upon what expectations what do you really want when you step into this? Or what are you, are you stepping into something assuming it will never be what you think it will? We have to let go of expectations of ego in our relationships here. Okay, two of pentacles. There's change at foot. And we need to learn to balance the, our what ifs and our fears with the truth. Nine of Pentacles. This talks about your own stability, your own fulfillment with yourself. Your own confidence. I mean, she doesn't have to worry, usually. It's saying, you know, you're actually in a much better position. You're a lot, you should be a lot more confident than you are. You've got everything. You're fine. You're good. Um, single happy woman card, but also... There's stability in money, stability in a lot of areas of life that maybe we didn't see before. Strength, and there you are. You have grown. There's a card of, that you know, you're being asked to master some areas of the self, which might take time, which might feel difficult. Um, with this Ten of Pentacles in reverse, you know, we get that. We get a bunch of pentacles here. So this is a lot about stability and what we build upon, what we build up our own confidence, our own ability to overcome on. What do we really believe we can accomplish? What do we really believe we can have in terms of love? What do you really think of yourself? 
Um, I really like it though. So if I just, I think it's good, good messages here. I don't think I want to pull any more. So let's, um, interesting. I did just see the Empress on the bottom reverse. I'm not going to take her out, but I think she has a lot to say or do with that Emperor card, that Emperor energy that we got. Maybe we can only rely on the father, on the mother, and whatever it might be, you really need to look at your parents' relationship and if you, you know, what that has to do with way, you know, the way we play out our relationships, the way we, what we expect in our relationships, what we're looking for, what we're taking rather than going for, you know? All right, let's pull some oracles now. <laughs> Big messages. All right, Leo's. First one out is, again, oh my god, amazing. Love yourself first. Your self-respect makes you more romantically attractive. Perfect for you. You need to respect yourself. And if we have not been giving ourselves the respect that we deserve in love, in the heart, in whatever it is that we need, we really need to look at what is going to give us that instead of settling for crumbs. We want the whole cake, right? Flirt. <laughs> True love and engagement come out. So um, extend your lighthearted energy to others. This is the romance of a lifetime and your love life is ascending to a higher level of commitment. We need to take a look at all this about this loving ourselves and extending this much more lighthearted energy to really recognize if we do feel true love to go for it, but to put our heart into it and to not, you know, again, take love from people unless it is a fair exchange, unless it is a fair balance a fair offer of, of equal love and nothing less you cannot take a love offer that is less than exactly what you're giving this person okay you need to learn that we can extend this lighthearted energy but look for that true love and don't hold out for anybody else unless you want to have fun have fun if you want to and don't feel bad about it be unapologetic about it no matter what again parental relationships and stuff where there's just a lot of needing satisfaction from other people a lot of abandonment issues a lot of um a lot a lot to be dealt with in those areas and a lot to heal from in those areas engagement but it's all helping you so that you can ascend your love life to those higher levels of a commitment that you really do want that it feels like you're aiming for but can't seem to get at so all right halloween oracle messages from the stacy demarco halloween oracle for Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. I'll do one card here. Okay. Night Song, Hidden Talents, and Black Cat, Fortune Meets Opportunity. I feel like there's one more, though. Mummy, Change. Yep, I knew it. All right. I'm going to take them all. Night Song, Hidden Talents. <clears throat> so, should this beautiful but shy bird sing to you during your div by appearing during your divination, know that you must unwrap the present of yourself. Look, some of the gifts within you remain unopened. The time has come to step into your true potential and claim all possibilities for yourself. There is no more time to waste, no more excuses. Let me get black hat. Fortune meets opportunity. All right, should the slinky black hat cross your path through this oracle, know that good luck and fortune will be meeting you promptly. Um, also know that your luck will be even luckier if you are prepared to take advantage of every special opportunity that comes your way. Mummy. Why am I going so far? Okay. Change. I love this card. <clears throat> Should you pull the moaning money? Should you pull the moaning mummy from the deck? Know that change is inevitable, and that no matter how hard you try, things will not be preserved exactly the same way. The card also indicates that this change will be for the better. The endings, the closed doors, the barriers. This is just a healthy pause and an indication that a change of tactics is needed. You are not cursed. You have just developed a pattern. You can take control and change it. So, Leo, um, those are your messages. This is the time to take control of your life to change it, okay? You have opportunity now to have the love life, have the connections that you want, but we have to be willing to shift and change here, okay? Um, it's changing so that we can have that life, and that's probably why it's been such a painful, crazy year. It's not easy for fixed signs to change. 
All right, guys. Thank you so, so much. Wishing you nothing but the best moving forward, guys. Um, love and light to you. Have a wonderful and blessed October. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Um, check out um, the description box below if you want to book a private reading. Um, check out your dailies, which are also up here and on my Instagram every day. And have a wonderful and blessed October. I know I just said that, but so long, guys. Namaste.